Hi folks, Tim here from High End Cheap Tech. No fancy graphics in this one, just mostly talk. But we're going to talk about one reason, and one reason alone, why you might want to consider if you're getting a lower end phone and a budget phone, don't, don't be looking for OLED's uh, displays. I know they have deep dark blacks and they're generally brighter than IPS, but not all of them. And you can get higher reses out of them, usually. You can get some pretty high res IPS displays also. IPS is, you know, basically they'll call it LCD display, but it's going to be in plane switching. We'll do that right after the intro. Let's get to that now. Hi, folks. Tim here, just cutting in. Quick message about TubeBuddy.com. As you will see coming up on the screen right now, TubeBuddy is the premier tool for helping you edit and maintain your presence as a creator on YouTube. It integrates flawlessly. They have a free version. Uh, it goes right into your browser and you use it as you're you know, doing your editing and, uh, and uploading. And it, it's an excellent tool uh, as far as prices go. The price is coming up on the screen. Um, if you get the free version, a lot of times they'll offer you, uh, they'll make you an offer. They made me an offer, and I'm only paying $4.50 a month. So check it out at the link that you're going to see on the screen and at the link below, uh, www.tubebuddy.com forward slash high end cheap tech. And now let's get back to that video we were doing. All right, folks, I'm back. And, uh, yeah, we got to run the tube, buddy, Ed. We got to make money and do something because we ain't getting no subscribers. Maybe somebody will sub after watching this video. Who knows? But IPS and OLED. Okay, IPS displays can be pretty damn bright, folks. I mean, here's that Alcatel I switched to for the day, and it's nice, and it's bright, it's sharp, and it's a few years old. And there's no screen burn in here, folks. Yeah, and that is the big advantage to IPS. So, and you can get a 720 or a 1080p, and for the most part, 90% of the people aren't going to know the difference, unless they're told it's an OLED. Uh, sure, you're not going to get as black of blacks, and all that stuff. But in the long run, you're going to get burn in on an OLED screen unless you're very careful. If you're using that super brightness, guess what's going to happen to you? Yeah, you're going to get burn in. And what burn in means is some of the pixels are going to get weaker and they're going to leave a ghost image of an icon or or you're always on display sitting up on the screen all the time even though you're in a different app and if you're in an app with a white background you're gonna go what the hell are those light pinky looking icons yeah where they that's burning folks there's no actual burning and this can happen uh i watched a number of videos today uh, just to uh, search for smartphone OLED burn-in. Uh, and the same thing happens to OLED TVs, by the way. Not as often, uh, because generally TV's always moving. You don't have, you know, like a fixed display. You don't have a menu, set of menu buttons at the bottom, or you don't have a, a certain set of icons always coming up on your screen. There are things you can do to diminish this in OLED. First off, set your screen and time out to a minute or less. Do not run that brightness wide open. There's no reason to do that. Turn on the adaptive brightness and, you know, lower that screen time out to a minute or less. Uh, and But there have been cases on Samsungs and on iPhones that get burn-in within, you know, we're not talking years down the road here, folks. In some cases, for people that have to have everything wide open because it's so bright and sharp. Uh, and this can happen on an OLED laptop too, by the way. Um, 
Oh, you know, that I'm tired of hearing the words deep inky blacks. As long as it's pretty close to black, I'm okay. All right. So just a word of advice. If you're buying a less expensive phone, don't go looking for the ones that have, you know, specifically, oh, it has OLED. Don't worry about that. Look for ones that have IPS displays. If you're going to keep this thing for two or three years, and if you're buying a budget phone, that's your intent probably, um, go with IPS. I know. You know, all the reviewers are going to, oh, no. Oh, the greatest thing since sliced bread is OLED. It, it can be, but you have to take care of it. Uh, that always-on display. Now, Samsung on their phones, they actually move, like, say you got the clock up there. They move it, like, a pixel over here, and the next time you go back to the always-on display, they move it a couple of pixels down. You, you won't even notice it, but you're not hitting them same ones. Otherwise, you get the clock face burned in. <coughs> you're using a clock. Uh, so... Or just don't use the clock face. Use something else. Use something that changes, maybe. Or find yourself an always-on display app that will show you some kind of active, you know, switch the always-on from, you know, one color to another color to one camera or angle. I mean, not angle. Uh, one, uh, like a watch face over to a digital and then a, digital back to a watch face every few hours. And uh, you might get away with it. But OLED is not the be-all, end-all. And it's always going to cost you more. Don't panic if it says it's an IPS LCD display. Ain't nothing wrong with them, folks. My Mi A2 has an LCD. My G3 has an LCD. The Alcatel has an LCD. The ZT Axon M, the foldable phone I have, as an uh, LCD IPS, and they're all clear, they're all sharp, and they all work, and they work really well. So just thought I'd put that out there for you, just information. So if you like this, found it informative or even remotely entertaining, uh, make sure to yeah, give us a thumbs up, like the video, and subscribe to our channel. You might find other useful information on here. I'll throw up a couple of videos in the corners at, at the end. Let's uh, call that a wrap. That's it for today and probably this weekend.